brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Josip Broz Tito Josip Broz Tito, born Josip Broz, was a Yugoslav revolutionary and statesman. Serving in various roles from 1943 until his death in 1980. During World War II, he was the leader of the Partisans, often regarded as the most effective resistance movement in occupied Europe. While his presidency has been criticized as authoritarian, and concerns about the repression of political opponents have been raised, some historians consider him a benevolent dictator. He was a popular public figure both in Yugoslavia and abroad, viewed as a unifying symbol. His internal policies maintained the peaceful coexistence of the nations of the Yugoslav Federation. He gained further international attention as the chief leader of the non-aligned movement, working with Jawaharlal Nehru of India, Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt and Sukarno of Indonesia. Josip Broz was born to a Croat father and Slovene mother in the village of Kumrovec, Croatia. Drafted into military service, he distinguished himself, becoming the youngest sergeant major in the Austro-Hungarian army of that time. After being seriously wounded and captured by the Imperial Russians during World War I, Josip was sent to a work camp in the Ural Mountains. He participated in the October Revolution, and later joined a Red Guard unit in Omsk. Upon his return home, Broz found himself in the newly established Kingdom of Yugoslavia, where he joined the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. He was General Secretary of the League of Communists of Yugoslavia, and went on to lead the World War II Yugoslav guerrilla movement, the Partisans. After the war, he was the Prime Minister, President of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. From 1943 to his death in 1980, he held the rank of Marshal of Yugoslavia, serving as the Supreme Commander of the Yugoslav military, the Yugoslav People's Army, with a highly favorable reputation abroad in both Cold War blocs. Josip Broz Tito received some 98 foreign decorations, including the Legion of Honor and the Order of the Bath. Tito was the chief architect and dictator of the Second Yugoslavia, a socialist federation that lasted from 1943 to 1991-92. Despite being one of the founders of Common Form, soon he became the first Common Form member to defy Soviet hegemony and the only one to manage to leave Common Form and begin with its own socialist program. Tito was a backer of independent roads to socialism. Pre-World War I Josip Broz was born on 7 May 1892 in Kumrovec, a village in the northern Croatian region of Hrvatsko Zagorje, which at that time was part of the Kingdom of Croatia Slavonia within the Austro Hungarian Empire. He was the seventh or eighth child of Franjo Broz and Marija Javasek, his parents having already lost a number of children in early infancy. He was christened and raised as a Roman Catholic. His father, Franjo, was a Croat whose family had lived in the village for three centuries, while his mother, Maraja, was a Slovene from the village of Podsreda. The villages were only apart, and his parents had been married on 21 January 1891. Franjo Broz had inherited a estate and a good house, but he was unable to make a success of farming. Josip spent a significant proportion of his preschool years living with his maternal grandparents at Podsreda, where he became a favorite of his grandfather Martin Jarvisek, and by the time he returned to Kumrovec to commence school, he spoke Slovene better than Croatian and had learned to play the piano. Despite his mixed parentage, Braz is often referred to as an ethnic Croat. In July 1900, at the age of eight, Braz entered primary school at Kumrovec, but only completed four years of school. 
failing the second grade then graduating in 1905, as a result of his limited schooling. Throughout his life he was poor at spelling. After leaving school, he initially worked for a maternal uncle then on the family farm. In 1907, his father wanted him to emigrate to the United States, but could not raise the money for the voyage. Instead, aged 15 years, Josip left Kumrovek and traveled about south to Sizak, where his cousin Jurika Broz was doing army service. Jurika helped him get a job in a restaurant, but Broz soon tired of that work and approached a Czech locksmith, Nikola Karas, for a three-year apprenticeship, which included training, food, and room and board. As his father could not afford to pay for his work clothing, Yosa paid for it himself. Soon after, his younger brother Stupan also became apprenticed to Karas. During his apprenticeship he was encouraged to mark May Day in 1909, and read and sold Slobodna Rek, a socialist newspaper. After completing his apprenticeship in September 1910, Braz used his contacts to gain employment in Zagreb, and at the age of 18 he joined the Metal Workers' Union and participated in his first labor protest. He also joined the Social Democratic Party of Croatia and Slavonia. He returned home in December 1910, and in early 1911 began a series of moves, first seeking work in Ljubljana then Trieste, Kumrovec and Zagreb, where he worked repairing bicycles and joined his first strike action on May Day 1911. After a brief period of work in Ljubljana, between May 1911 on May 1912 he worked in a factory in Kamnik in the Kamnik Savonier Alps, and when it closed, he was offered redeployment to Senkov in Bohemia. On arriving at his new workplace he discovered that the employer was trying to bring in cheaper labor to replace the local Czech workers, and he and others joined successful strike action to force the employer to back down. Driven by curiosity, Braz then moved to Pleasen, where he was briefly employed at the Skoda Works, then traveled to Munich in Bavaria. He also worked at the Benz car factory in Mannheim, and visited the Ruhr. By October 1912, he had arrived in Vienna where he stayed with his older brother Martin and his family and worked at the Griedel Works before getting a job at Wien in Neustadt where he worked for Daimler, and was often asked to drive and test the cars. During this time he spent considerable time fencing and dancing, and during his training and early work life he also learned German in passable Czech. World War I In May 1913, Braz was conscripted into the Austro-Hungarian army for his compulsory two years of service. He successfully requested that he serve with the 25th Croatian Home Guard Regiment garrisoned in Zagreb. After learning to ski, during the winter of 1913-14, he was sent to a school for non-commissioned officers in Budapest, after which he was promoted to sergeant major, and became the youngest of that rank in his regiment. At least one source states that he was also the youngest sergeant major in the Austro-Hungarian army. After winning the regimental fencing competition, Braz went on to come second in the army fencing championships in Budapest in May 1914. Soon after the outbreak of World War I in 1914, the 25th Croatian Home Guard Regiment marched towards the Serbian border, but Braz was arrested for sedition and imprisoned in the Petrovaradin fortress in present-day Novi Sad. Braz later gave conflicting accounts of this arrest, telling one biographer that he had threatened to desert to the Russians, but also claiming that the whole matter arose from a clerical error. A third version was that he had been overheard saying that he hoped the Austro-Hungarian Empire would be defeated. After his acquittal and release, 
His regiment served briefly on the Serbian front before being deployed to the Eastern Front in Galicia in early 1915 to fight against Russia. On one occasion, the scout platoon he commanded went behind the enemy lines and captured 80 Russian soldiers, bringing them back to their own lines alive. In 1980 it was discovered that he had been recommended for an award for gallantry and initiative in reconnaissance and capturing prisoners. On 25 March 1915, he was seriously wounded and captured during a Russian attack near Bukovina. Now a prisoner of war, Braz was transported east to a hospital established in an old monastery in the town of Sviajisk on the Volga River near Kazan. During his 13 months in hospital he had bouts of pneumonia and typhus, and learned Russian. With the help of two schoolgirls who brought him Russian classics by such authors as Tolstoy and Turgenev to read. After recuperating, in mid-1916 he was transferred to the Ardatov POW camp in the Samara Governorate, where he used his skills to maintain the nearby village grain mill. At the end of the year, he was again transferred this time to the Kungur Pau camp near Perm where the Pows were used as labor to maintain the newly completed Trans-Siberian Railway. Braz was appointed to be in charge of all the Pows in the camp. During this time he became aware that the Red Cross parcels sent to the Pows were being stolen by camp staff. When he complained, he was beaten and put in prison. During the February Revolution, a crowd broke into the prison and returned Braz to the POW camp. A Bolshevik he had met while working on the railway told Braz that his son was working in an engineering works in Petrograd, so in June 1917 Braz walked out of the unguarded POW camp and hid the border goods train bound for that city, where he stayed with his friend's son. The journalist Richard West has suggested that, because Broz chose to remain in an unguarded POW camp rather than volunteer to serve with the Yugoslav legions of the Serbian army, this indicates that he remained loyal to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and undermines his later claim that he and other Croat POWs were excited by the prospect of revolution and looked forward to the overthrow of the empire that ruled them. Less than a month after Broz arrived in Petrograd, the July Days demonstrations broke out, and Broz joined in, coming under fire from government troops. In the aftermath, he tried to flee to Finland in order to make his way to the United States, but was stopped at the border. He was arrested along with other suspected Bolsheviks during the subsequent crackdown by the Russian provisional government led by Alexander Kerensky. He was imprisoned in the Peter and Paul fortress for three weeks, during which he claimed to be an innocent citizen of Perm. When he finally admitted to being an escaped POW, he was to be returned by train to Kungla, but escaped at Ekaterinburg, then caught another train which reached Emsk in Siberia on 8 November after a journey. At one point, police searched the train looking for an escaped POW, but were deceived by Broj fluent Russian. In Omsk the train was stopped by local Bolsheviks who told Braz that Vladimir Lenin had seized control of Petrograd. They recruited him into an international Red Guard which guarded the Trans-Siberian Railway. During the winter of 1917-18, in May 1918, the anti-Bolshevik Czechoslovak Legion wrested control of parts of Siberia from Bolshevik forces, and the provisional Siberian government established itself in Omsk, and Braz and his comrades went into hiding. At this time Braz met a beautiful 14-year-old local girl, Palagia Polka Belusova, who hid him then helped him escape to a Kyrgyz village from Omsk. Braz again worked maintaining the local mill until November 1919 when the Red Army recaptured Omsk from white forces loyal to the provisional all-Russian government of Alexander Koltkik. 
He moved back to Omsk and married Belusova in January 1920. At the time of their marriage, Braz was 27 years old and Belusova was 15. In the autumn of 1920 he and his pregnant wife returned to his homeland, first by train to Narva, by ship to Stettin, then by train to Vienna, where they arrived on 20 September. In early October Braz returned home to Kamrovec in what was then the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes to find that his mother had died and his father had moved to Jastabarsko near Zagreb. Sources differ over whether Broz joined the Communist Party while in Russia, but he stated that the first time he joined the party was in Zagreb after he returned to his homeland. Communist Agitator Upon his return home, Braz was unable to gain employment as a metal worker in Kumrovec, so he and his wife moved briefly to Zagreb, where he worked as a waiter and took part in a waiter's strike. He also joined the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. The CPY's influence on the political life of Yugoslavia was growing rapidly. In the 1920 elections it won 59 seats and became the third strongest party. After the assassination of Milora Draskovic, the Yugoslav Minister of the Interior, by a young communist on 2 August 1921, the CPY was declared illegal under the Yugoslav State Security Act of 1921. Due to his overt communist links, Braz was fired from his employment. He and his wife then moved to the village of Veliko Trojestvo where he worked as a mill mechanic. After the arrest of the CPY leadership in January 1922, Stevo Sabic took over control of its operations. Sabic contacted Braz who agreed to work illegally for the party distributing leaflets and agitating among factory workers. In the contest of ideas between those that wanted to pursue moderate policies and those that advocated violent revolution, Braz sided with the latter. In 1924, Braz was elected to the CPY District Committee, but after he gave a speech at a comrade's Catholic funeral he was arrested when the priest complained paraded through the streets in chains, he was held for eight days and was eventually charged with creating a public disturbance. With the help of a Serbian Orthodox prosecutor who hated Catholics, Braz, and his co-accused were acquitted. His brush with the law had marked him as a communist agitator, and his home was searched on an almost weekly basis. Since their arrival in Yugoslavia, Pelagia had lost three babies soon after their births, and one daughter, Zelatina. At the age of two, Braz felt the loss of Zelatina deeply. In 1924, Pelagia gave birth to a boy, Zarko, who survived. In mid-1925, Braz's employer died, and the new mill owner gave him an ultimatum, give up his communist activities or lose his job. So, at the age of 33, Braz became a professional revolutionary. Professional revolutionary The CPY concentrated its revolutionary efforts on factory workers in the more industrialized areas of Croatia and Slovenia, encouraging strikes and similar action. In 1925, the now unemployed Braz moved to Kraljevica on the Adriatic coast, where he started working at a shipyard to further the aims of the CPY. While at Kraljevica he worked on Yugoslav torpedo boats and a pleasure yacht for the People's Radical Party politician, Milan Stojadinovic. Braz built up the trade union organization in the shipyards and was elected as a union representative. A year later he led a shipyard strike, and soon after was fired. In October 1926 he obtained work in a railway works in Smedrevska Palanka near Belgrade, 
In March 1927, he wrote an article complaining about the exploitation of workers in the factory, and after speaking up for a worker he was promptly sacked. Identified by the CPY as worthy of promotion, he was appointed secretary of the Zagreb branch of the Metal Workers' Union, and soon after of the whole Croatian branch of the Union. In July 1927 Braz was arrested, along with six other workers, and imprisoned at nearby Alta series of three black and white head and shoulders photographs in February 1928 Braz was one of 32 delegates to the conference of the Croatian branch of the CPY. During the conference, Braz condemned factions within the party. These included those that advocated a greater Serbia agenda within Yugoslavia. Like the long-term CPY leader, the Serb Sima Markovic, Broz proposed that the Executive Committee of the Communist International purge the branch of factionalism, and was supported by a delegate sent from Moscow. After it was proposed that the entire Central Committee of the Croatian branch be dismissed, a new Central Committee was elected with Broz as its secretary. Markovic was subsequently expelled from the CPY at the 4th Congress of the Comintern, and the CPY adopted a policy of working for the breakup of Yugoslavia. Broz arranged to disrupt a meeting of the ultra black and white photograph of two men. Prison After his sentencing, his wife and son returned to Kumrovec, where they were looked after by sympathetic locals, but then one day they suddenly left without explanation and returned to the Soviet Union. She fell in love with another man and Zarko grew up in institutions. After arriving at Lepiglava prison, Braz was employed in maintaining the electrical system and chose as his assistant a middle-class Belgrade Jew, Mosa Pijade who had been given a 20-year sentence for his communist activities. Their work allowed Braz and Pijade to move her around the prison, contacting and organizing other communist prisoners. During their time together in Lepoglava, Pijade became Braz's ideological mentor. After two and a half years at Lepiglava, Braz was accused of attempting to escape and was transferred to Maribor prison where he was held in solitary confinement for several months. After completing the full term of his sentence, he was released only to be arrested outside the prison gates and taken to Ogolin to serve the four-month sentence he had avoided in 1927. He was finally released from prison on 16 March 1934, but even then he was subject to orders that required him to live in Kumrovec and report to the police daily. During his imprisonment, the political situation in Europe had changed significantly, with the rise of Adolf Hitler in Germany and the emergence of right-wing parties in France and neighboring Austria. He returned to a warm welcome in Kumrovec, but did not stay for long. In early May, he received word from the CPY to return to his revolutionary activities, and left his hometown for Zagreb, where he rejoined the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Croatia. The Croatian branch of the CPY was in disarray, a situation exacerbated by the escape of the Executive Committee of the CPY to Vienna in Austria, from which they were directing activities. Over the next six months, Braz traveled several times between Zagreb, Ljubljana and Vienna, using false passports. In July 1934, he was blackmailed by a smuggler, but pressed on across the border, and was detained by the local Heimwehr, a paramilitary home guard. He used the Austrian accent he had developed during his war service to convince them that he was a wayward Austrian mountaineer, and they allowed him to proceed to Vienna. Once there, he contacted the general secretary of the CPY, Milan Gorkic, who sent him to Ljubljana. 
to arrange a secret conference of the CPY in Slovenia. The conference was held at the Summer Palace of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Ljubljana, whose brother was a communist sympathizer. It was at this conference that Brals first met Edward Kardolj, a young Slovene communist who had recently been released from prison. Braz and Kardolj subsequently became good friends, with Tito later regarding him as his most reliable deputy, as he was wanted by the police. For failing to report to them in Kumrovec, Braz adopted various pseudonyms, including Rudy and Tito. He used the latter as a pen name when he wrote articles for party journals in 1934, and it stuck. He gave no reason for choosing the name of Tito, except that it was a common nickname for men from the district where he grew up, within the Comintern network. His nickname was Walter. Flight from Yugoslavia During this time Tito wrote articles on the duties of imprisoned communists and on trade unions. He was in Ljubljana when King Alexander was assassinated by the Croatian Nationalist Ustase organization in Marseille on 9 October 1934. In the crackdown on dissidents that followed his death, it was decided that Tito should leave Yugoslavia. He traveled to Vienna on a forged Czech passport, where he joined Gorkic and the rest of the Politburo of the CPY. It was decided that the Austrian government was too hostile to communism. So the Politburo traveled to BRNO in Czechoslovakia, and Tito accompanied them. On Christmas Day 1934, a secret meeting of the Central Committee of the CPY was held in Ljubljana, and Tito was elected as a member of the Politburo for the first time. The Politburo decided to send him to Moscow to report on the situation in Yugoslavia. And in early February 1935 he arrived there as full-time official of the Comintern. He lodged at the main Comintern residence, the Hotel Lux on Tuvaskaya Street, and was quickly in contact with Vladimir Kopik, one of the leading Yugoslavs with the Comintern. He was soon introduced to the main personalities in the organization. Tito was appointed to the Secretariat of the Balkan Section, responsible for Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Romania, and Greece. Kardolj was also in Moscow, as was the Bulgarian communist leader Georgi Dimitrov. Tito lectured on trade unions to foreign communists and attended a course on military tactics run by the Red Army, and occasionally attended the Bolshoi Theater. He attended as one of 510 delegates to the Seventh World Congress of the Comintern in July and August 1935, where he briefly saw Joseph Stalin for the first time. After the Congress, he toured the Soviet Union, then returned to Moscow to continue his work. He contacted Polka and Zarko, but soon fell in love with an Austrian woman who worked at the Hotel Lux. Johanna Koenig, known within communist ranks as Lucia Bauer. When she became aware of this liaison, Polka divorced Tito in April 1936. Tito married Bauer on 13 October of that year. After the World Congress, Tito worked to promote the new Comintern line on Yugoslavia, which was that it would no longer work to break up the country, and would instead defend the integrity of Yugoslavia against Nazism and fascism. From a distance, Tito also worked to organize strikes at the shipyards at Kral Devika and the coal mines at Trebovlu and near Ljubljana. He tried to convince the Comintern that it would be better if the party leadership was located inside Yugoslavia. A compromise was arrived at, where Tito and others would work inside the country, and Gorkic and the Politburo would continue to work from abroad. Gorkic and the Politburo relocated to Paris, while Tito began to travel between Moscow, Paris, 
and Zagreb in 1936 and 1937, using false passports. In 1936, his father died. Tito returned to Moscow in August 1936, soon after the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War. At the time, the Great Purge was underway, and foreign communists like Tito and his Yugoslav compatriots were particularly vulnerable. Despite a laudatory report written by Tito about the veteran Yugoslav communist Filip Filipovic, he was arrested and shot by the Soviet secret police, the NKVD. However, before the purge really began to erode the ranks of the Yugoslav communists in Moscow, Tito was sent back to Yugoslavia with a new mission, to recruit volunteers for the international brigades being raised to fight on the Republican side in the Spanish Civil War. Traveling via Vienna, he reached the coastal port city of Split in December 1936. According to the Croatian historian Ivo Banic, the reason Tito was sent back to Yugoslavia by the Comintern was in order to purge the CPY. An initial attempt to send 500 volunteers to Spain by ship failed utterly, with nearly all the communist volunteers being arrested and imprisoned. Tito then traveled to Paris, where he arranged the travel of volunteers to France under the cover of attending the Paris exhibition. Once in France, the volunteers simply crossed the Pyrenees to Spain. In all, he sent 1192 men to fight in the war, but only 330 came from Yugoslavia, the rest being expatriates in France, Belgium, the US and Canada. Less than half were communists, and the rest were social democrats and anti-fascists of various hues. Of the total, 671 were killed in the fighting, and another 300 were wounded. Tito himself never went to Spain, despite later claims that he had. Between May and August 1937, Tito traveled several times between Paris and Zagreb organizing the movement of volunteers and creating a separate Communist Party of Croatia. The new party was inaugurated at a conference at Sanoba on the outskirts of Zagreb on 1-2 August 1937. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.